Welcome to Rupp Arena and the SEC on ESPN. Part of the Saturday Showcase presented by Five Hour Energy. The Kentucky Wildcats have gotten a couple of scares over the last eight days, but they're still undefeated. They have a chance to tie their best start in program history, number one Kentucky and South Carolina at Rupp Arena. Adam Amin, what a great Valentine I got. Dick Vitale here. <laughs> you saw Kentucky get another one of those scares on Tuesday night against LSU. Yeah, they really did. They're not playing the kind of defense that they played earlier in the year when they were scintillating against teams like UCLA, Kansas, North Carolina. They're going to get back to that defensive mindset. Teams have been shooting better than 45%. They lead the nation right now at 34.2. So they got to get back to defense. A special moment today, though. That's right. John Calipari nominated for the Hall of Fame. He was talking to us about it. He's very excited about it. Also very excited about the post-production that he's starting to get. And Carl Anthony Towns had a huge game, especially late against LSU. Well, he was a difference maker, Adam. He really was. Late in the game, he made one big play after another. He's been a special player, a special talent. He's got a lot of potential. There he is with the slam dunk on the inside. Now, here we're going to see a little jump hook across the lane late in the game that was a big play and that was the step back jump shot the clock was winding down and he made a big one and this might have been the biggest play kept the ball alive with a terrific offensive rebound that was big my friends Look at the starting lineups. You see number one Kentucky putting Trey Lyles back into the starting lineup. He returned on Tuesday against LSU after an illness. He's back in the starting lineup with the Blue Platoon tonight. Notice Thornwell, Johnson, Carrera, and Hotkevich is for South Carolina. They were, are without Marcus Stroman, their freshman, who is second on the team in assists. He is out for the second consecutive game. He's got a throat infection. Well, there he is, nominated today to potentially be inducted into the Naismith Hall of Fame. Very excited about it. 98-4 and four at Rupp Arena under Calipari. Well, he was nominated also with Bo Ryan. I per personally believe that both guys have earned the right to be elected to the Hall of Fame. When you look at what John Calipari did at Massachusetts, Memphis, and I don't want to hear people screaming and yelling about, well, they took the banners down. Well, do you think he'd be coaching Kentucky today if they didn't check everything out with the NCAA? He was not implicated in any form or fashion. In fact, they wrote a letter and simply stated in the letter that he was free of any charges whatsoever in the Tamby situation with an agent and Derrick Rose with the test score. Carl Anthony Towns wins the tip over Hotkevichis. Mark Whitehead, Terry Morrill, and his pool are officiating crew. And the Wildcats off that two-point win at LSU on Tuesday night. The Tigers got up early in that game. Kentucky had a 13-point lead. That Carl Anthony Towns technical foul. And then the Wildcats storm back. And Carl Anthony Towns off to a dynamite start. Well, great penetration there. Created the opportunity right out the start. You look right now, South Carolina beat them last year, played them earlier this year, and it was a struggle. They shot 22%. They're going to have to do a better job there. And Hakevich is going to have to do a job on the inside. Here is notice. He got a little bit of space to take a three. Can South Carolina make some outside shots uh, yeah. against Kentucky? You know, Adam, they have not done that well at all, all year. 29% right. from outside this year. Here's Caldy Stein against the smaller Carrera. A rebound for Michael Carrera, their best rebound. I'll tell you one thing about Carrera. He will challenge you. He will play with a lot of intensity and emotion. Key player for them is Thorne well. And Darius Thornwell coming off a very good game against Missouri, a 65-60 win for South Carolina to get back to 3-8 and eight in the SEC. They've split their last four games. He made a big three late in that game that they needed badly. There he is in the lane, got caught. Still 10 on the shot clock. Shorten the game a little bit, took a little time off that clock. Over the taller Carl Anthony Towns and Pauly Stein the board. Little Pauly Stein, such a factor, rebounding, blocking shots. Carl Anthony Towns draws the foul. Andrew Harrison with the early assist for Carl Anthony Towns has been dynamite the last four games. We're going to watch Harrison now. Strong drive to the goal. Defense rotates over. Slips it over to his buddy. He gets an assist to the book. Hey, what about Valentine hitting a <laughs> big three today for Michigan State on Valentine's How Day? How appropriate is that? Gonna, I know you got you got some, some good names for an all-Valentine's wow. Day list, my friend. All-Valentine's time. It's unbelievable. Carl Anthony Towns, Calipari wanted more post presence. He's getting it from both Willie Cauley Stein and Carl Anthony Towns as of late. The freshman out of Piscataway has all four for the Cats who start with some pressure. Well, the one thing John Calipari talked about today, he wants to develop the killer instinct. You get a team down 12, 14, you got to put them away by big numbers like they did earlier this season. Now you talked about it. They've 
blown out Kansas. They blew out UCLA. And as of late, and you can understand that as you get towards this point of the season, starting to get a little bit more tight in a lot of these games. Had a tough one with Florida. Came down to the last possession. Same thing with LSU. Another tough one on Tuesday against Tennessee. Johnson late in the clock trying to penetrate, using the arm to get some space, and Johnson puts him on the board. Nice drive by Johnson. He's a transfer. Came over from Villanova. Played for a very good high school coach in Montrose Christian and Stu Vetter, as did Michael Carrera. Yeah, Stu Vetter, outstanding for many a year, developed many great players. Kevin Durant being among them. Not a bad player. Decent. Trey Lyles off target on the three, and Carl Anthony Towns slapped it into the backcourt. It was deflected, so it's run down by Andrew Harris. You know, Adam, one of your strengths in Kentucky obviously is the offensive glass. Not a strength is the defensive boards. A whistle and a foul called by Terry Moore. It'll be against Lyamonis Hotkevichis, Frank Martin, in his third season at South Carolina. This South Carolina club has not gone to the NCAA tournament since 2004. The NIT was back in 2009. And Frank Martin just trying to build. Paul Biancardi texted you and I both and said he's got a nice recruiting class coming in this year. He's getting his guys into the mix now. So things looking up in Columbia. Carl Anthony Towns has all six. So smooth. Really so smooth on the interior. He used the left or right hand. He has really his numbers have gone up. His minutes have gone up a little bit as well. In the last four games, really the last three or four games, Carl Anthony Towns and Cauley Stein have been fantastic. Zonson trying to take the bigger Cauley Stein off the dribble. And it's a jump ball, which will keep it at this end of the floor. You talk about a player with unbelievable potential. Look at him right, locking on the inside. Carl Anthony Towns comes across the lane, uses the left hand very effectively. Freshman out of Piscataway, New Jersey, six and a half boards. He's second in the SEC behind Jordan Mickey, although in shot blocks, there's not a lot of guys better than Jordan Mickey. Well, you know, the numbers are really deceiving when you look at the Kentucky numbers because of the limited minutes that they That's play. Right. If you were to extrapolate Carl Anthony Towns' numbers over 40 minutes, he'd be one of the best shot blockers in the country. Carrera trying to get free underneath. Johnson to notice for three. I mean, that's a brick right there. Not even close. Good, good rebound, though, getting a second opportunity. How about that in traffic? Carrera with like three white jerseys around him was able to do. Thornwell, tough spot. Off target on the three, though, was Kaichidis. We got a whistle and a foul here. Kaichin is capable of making that shot, and that's really been a problem for them. Take a look at this here. Look at these numbers. Look at the minutes that they play. Nobody's played 30 minutes. And look at the average. Harrison with 26 leads the club. We talked with John Calipari about that. You've talked to him about it before. The platoon system, so to speak. How much longer do you think he can go with it? Well, you heard me tell him inside. I think when he gets to the SEC tournament, he's got to play the best players. I mean, you got to convert that. You get an opportunity yep. on the inside. They're driving. The one thing about Frank Martin's kids, they will play with intensity. They will play with emotion, play with passion. But you got to be able to have the skill to make some shots. Notice, trying to guard Andrew Harrison gets charged with a foul. That'll take us to a time mind. All six points for Kentucky belong to Carl Anthony Towns. Early four-point lead. Five-hour energy at Rupp Arena in Lexington, Kentucky. Unbeaten Wildcats up 6-2 early. Adam Amin, Dick Vitale, and Kaylee Hartung with us as well. You were talking a lot with Coach Calipari about winning time. Let's talk about that. Well, Adam, following that close call at LSU on Tuesday, a teachable moment for Cal. He tells his guys, when you've got a 12 or a 13 point lead, you need to hone your killer instinct. You need to stretch that lead to 20. That's what he calls winning time. He no longer wants the Cats letting opponents hang around. At LSU, they let a 13 point lead turn into a two point deficit. It's all about further preparation for March. At that time, when a lead is shrunk from 12 to six and the opponents hit a three, the weight of the world is on your shoulders. To that point, he's amped up practice. They went hard for an hour-long scrimmage on Thursday, 15 minutes on Friday. That's not something they're normally doing at this time of the year. Harrison off target. Lyles is there for the putback. I think that size inside is just too strong and too big right now early in this game to South Carolina. They're going to have to find a way to make some threes to be able to hang here with Kentucky. And that's not their strong suit. Tyrone Johnson, six assists, just one turnover in that win against Missouri. Andrew Harrison trying to volleyball it on the sideline. The only problem is 
Right now, Kentucky's not Missouri. <laughs> That's, a good hey, you look That's at a Kentucky. solid point, man. Hey, you look at Kentucky. Non-conference win margin, 27.5. In the Southeastern Conference, plus 14. I think the Southeastern Conference has been a lot better than many anticipated. Joe Lunardi has six SEC teams in his latest bracketology in the field of 68. There is a turnover that South Carolina can't afford. I don't go against Joe Lunardi, man. That guy is absolutely a psychologist when it comes to that. As you look here at the bracketology, you look at the teams. I mean, LSU, you talk about talent. They see have an inside attack that was able to challenge Kentucky. They got 40 points in the paint between Mickey and Martin and company. And not many teams can do that against Kentucky. Here is Andrew Harrison with the left hand. Having their way, getting to the basket, not stopping penetration. Early 10-2 lead for Kentucky. It was a close game in Columbia with about four minutes to go in the first half. South Carolina got a big three, took a one-point lead, and then after that, it was all Kentucky. Yeah, Thornwell hit a big three, and the place really rocked. Fans were really ready out there. And another turnover thrown away by Notice, and Willie Cauley-Stein, one of the best defenders in college basketball, with the pick. Aaron Harrison. And Pereira snares it. South Carolina just 2 and 25 all time in Lexington. Another three is off target. South Carolina hasn't hit one from outside yet. Holy Stein on uh -oh. the push. Uh oh. He can run. He can jump. He can score. Kentucky came to play, man. It's Valentine's Day. And they're going to give a lot of love, but you don't see a lot of red in this place. You see loads of blue, baby. Willie Cauley Stein, Jam City. Well, it's the weekend uh, of the dunk. It's for love of the dunk this weekend. And uh, Willie Cauley-Stein, I'm sure, endearing himself to a lot of Kentucky fans right now. Okay, one thing, these players here, they're like heroes down in this community, especially when you sit at 24-0. They win today. They tie in a corrupt record of 25 and zip back in 53 and 54. Now, that team turned down a bit to the NCAA. Some players that were declared ineligible. As other players wanted him to enter the NCAA tournament, Adolph Rupp didn't think it would be proper for his team to play in the tournament that year, so he declined the invitation. Notice with 10 on the clock, South Carolina broke to start it from the outside. The 0 for 4 from three-point range, shot clock all the way down to 2, and Thornwell gets bailed out with a late foul on the drive. Well, Thornwell taking it to the basket, he's very athletic. He's got good versatility to his game. Towns picks up the foul. He's going to challenge the two big guys. He's I know they're shot blockers. I know they're second in the nation. They're second in the nation, Adam, in block shots. They're number one in the nation in field goal percentage defensively, and they're number two in the nation in points allowed per game. Only Virginia has allowed fewer points. Only Texas has more shot blocks this season than Kentucky. And the white platoon is going to check in for the first time. I tell you one thing, you heard me talking to him there before the game about the platoon system. I think come the SEC, he's going to start now. He said the big problem is trying to psychologically determine who the seven, eight players that should play. If he thinks he's going to cut down the rotation a little bit, he said, you're eight or nine guys might be different than my eight or nine guys might be different than somebody else's eight or nine guys. There's only one guy's eight or nine guys count, and that's the guy that's a future that's Hall right. of Famer. Harrison throwing it up top for Johnson, could not corral it. He's able to snare it in a fresh shot clock. Right back to Dakari. Just bullying his oh, way inside. Oh. Instead of getting the easy dunk, he's going to get it the hard way. Power layup utilizing the left hand. Squared his body really well. Off target steal for three. And it's run down by Booker, but he stepped out of bounds. Tough to beat Kentucky when you're 0 for 5. Can't defend them on the inside with their size. You saw Dakari Johnson have a pretty good game overall against LSU. He was aggressive right here. John Gallipari wants him to be much more aggressive. He wants that from all of his post guys. I think we've talked about the last three or four games. Those post guys have been very, very productive. They're so talented, so skilled, so athletic. Tucky wins the battle in the paint. They seem to be about as good as anybody in the country. Henry was in trouble. Thornwell came out to help. Kaichin is for three. 0 for 6 from three-point range. And a foul for South Carolina called on Justin Mackey, who's playing for the first time since the first Kentucky game. 
Big Monday presented by Verizon at 7. Pittsburgh will take on the number two team in the country, Virginia. The only team to allow fewer points than Kentucky per game. Then a very good one. Kansas and West Virginia. That's a tough place to play. Kansas lost there a season ago. We'll see that as part of Rivalry Week presented by Wendy's on Monday. You know, Virginia suffered a tough break using Justin Anderson. There's a little drive in the lanes. Score. Uh, Justin Anderson about as crucial to Virginia's success as anybody. He was really starting to play like an all-league player. They do a great job. They make up for the loss with their defensive effort. Everything's a struggle right here for South Carolina. Every possession. Thornwell trying to be aggressive and got it blocked by Marcus Lee. And that's what they do well, block shots. There's Eulis. One of the best assist to turnover ratios in the country. He's been an outstanding point guard off the bench. You know, Adam, practice has to really be intense because there's not much of a drop off for many of these guys personnel wise, skill wise. And the five on five yesterday, as Kaylee alluded to during practice, was very tough. Booker mid range. He can flat out shoot the rock. This thing's getting ugly, man. It's getting ugly. They're not showing some love. It's Valentine's Day. They got that killer's attitude, it seems, here this afternoon. Another thing Kaylee talked about in her report, does this team have the killer instinct to maintain a lead like this, too? And they look locked in right now. Mackey's got nowhere to go. Johnson setting it up for Henry, and finally a three-pointer goes in off the glass. It goes off the glass. I don't think he can it that, wanted it that way, but it counts as three. And Booker quickly back the other way. Dakari Johnson trying to battle for position on the inside. Out of bounds stays here. Takes us to a timeout, 11-10 to play. It's all Kentucky back at home early, leading by a dozen. All Kentucky early in this ball game, 11-10 to play first half, leading by 12. Back courtside of Rupp Arena, Adam Amin, Dick Vitale. It's been a rough week for college basketball in general. Dean Smith, we lost last week. We lost Jerry Tarkanian earlier this week, and I know you have a lot to say about both of those guys. Well, you know, Dean and certainly Jerry did it different ways, different contrasting styles, but they're both winners. Winners on the court and winners with their young people. You talk about Jerry Tarkanian. He had such a love affair with his players. I've never heard a player say a bad word about him. He had that way. I didn't label them the father plan to get a coaching. If a kid <laughs> had a problem, I mean, the numbers, they tell a story right there looking at those numbers are unbelievable but you basically if the kid had a problem he went down to Jerry Tarkanian he had a way to give him the love the attention and get the most out of him his practice sessions Adam were unbelievable I talk about intensity and emotion look at Reggie Diaz Jr his dad was certainly a special special talent that played at UNLV and that 90 team people were Ooh. talking about them the following year as being maybe the best ever and then they had that little slip up when Duke found a way to win Duke battled them after getting beat by 30 in the NCAA championship game the year before so that knocked off that conversation but that team was special Larry Johnson Stacy Augman Greg Anthony Anderson Hunt George Ackles pretty good memory man uh, look at this look at this execution inside action rotate down the line oh wow Beautiful ball movement. Dakari Johnson is one of seven different Wildcats to score the 20 points in this game. That's why when you look at their numbers, their numbers aren't indicative. They're about a team. They're about the whole. In South Carolina find any offense somewhere right now. Their yeah, numbers man. offensively in SEC play have gone down significantly. But they've had a tough time scoring all year. They've been held below 70 points, seven, 12 straight games. Late in the clock again. Is that probably the fourth or fifth possession that somebody has to take a very late in the clock shot for South Carolina? The one area Kentucky doesn't excel on. Kent Pomeroy does a great job with the stats, the guru, as their defensive rebounder. Johnson got it back, tried to flip it to Lee, and it will go to South Carolina. Yeah, of all the things that you look at, Dickey. Probably defensive rebounding is the only spot that Kentucky seemingly has some flaws. Yeah, that's the area where they just don't. He blames it a little bit on the guards. He told us in the pregame talk with him. Look at the points in paint. 16 to zip. Pretty tough to win when you get those numbers. Yeah, surprisingly enough, it's more guard rebounding between guys like Lyles and Harrison's and Booker to try to board on the defensive end than anything else. It's not necessarily Cauley Stein and Towns and Johnson getting beat on the defensive end. That's what he told us before the game, sharing that conversation with him. So guards got to do a better job rebounding. 
Notice to Pereira. Got to flip it in. The tip would not fall for Hakevichis. They got Heichis. And Johnson just rips it away. Pereira gives such an effort there and came up empty. He played his hard on that rebound. Very tenacious. Aaron Harrison had space and knocks down another three. They are really executed. They're relaxed. They're playing really that kind of basketball. You don't see another pressure. I don't feel and feel any pressure whatsoever coming from South Carolina. I think it's interesting. You did the first Missouri game where they just blew out the Tigers. Wow. And that came after two games where they got challenged by Ole Miss and Texas A&M. They came back to Rupp Arena and just blew out Missouri. You're kind of getting that same sense right now. A couple of scares from Florida and LSU, and they're coming out on fire today. Playing a lot of emotion intensity. Some games coming up on that Duke Syracuse. Are you kidding me? That's going to be special. I know UConn and SMU. That's a nice battle out there. Larry Brown and Kevin Alley. Got Dave O'Brien on the call with Doris Berg. Both of them do a great job. Moody Coliseum is one of the underrated atmospheres probably in college basketball. And Connecticut's starting to play really well. They got a nice win over Tulsa the other night. They won easily. And Tulsa's been having such a great, great year. I know they're going to be rocking over in Syracuse. I know Dan and Jay are going to have a great time. That environment of be electric pushing at the mantle inside Christmas and Okafor. And Okafor. Second foul against Carl Anthony Towns with 8.52 to play in the first. First time working with you, my friend. Enjoying it. I know you're really prepared. I'm looking at all your notes here. <laughs> I mean, wow. Wow. Thinking you're really prepared, man. Oh, look at you. What a, what a sweetheart on Valentine's well, Day. Well, didn't they tell you that all you're supposed to say is, hi, everybody, I'm going to take my count. Don't say another <laughs> yeah, one. I don't, have to do much, <laughs> I don't have to do much else for the rest of the night. It is the tough sledding for South Carolina early in this game. Yeah, trying to get an open look. Very difficult to beat them to the basket. They have help inside and walk in violation. I want to point something out to you just then. Pauly Stein was guarding a guard out on the perimeter. That's something John Calipari raves about, and that's why he says he's one of the best defenders in the country. Well, he really is, and he's also a guy that can rebound. I think he's a little bit more aggressive on the offensive side. Larry Gordon wrote a story about him, quoting me saying that I'd like to see him be a little bit more aggressive offensively. Aaron Harrison flipped it in and got a foul. A spectacular play by Aaron Harrison. Everything they're doing is right here this afternoon. Everything. They're executing. They're playing with intensity. John Calabrese has got to love the effort he's getting. Tyrone Johnson was slow to get up after the play. He's a little bit shaken up. He's back up on his feet and kind of favoring his left eye, it looks like. We'll see Kentucky again Tuesday. They go to volunteer country down there at Tennessee. They've got some tough games coming up. Tennessee certainly sticks out. Probably the maybe the toughest road game at Georgia as well. And what you think Arkansas when they come to Rupp Arena? Well, Arkansas certainly has played a little better on the road, but really here is so tough to beat them at Rupp. You talked about John Calipari's record here is unreal at home. 98-4. Harrison finishes off that three-point play. Free throw shooting was big for them in that win over Florida. Missed one free throw. Andrew missed one. They were at 21 for 22 on the line. They needed every one of them there to get that win. I was going to say, how about Florida struggling a little bit at the line in that game? That same day, Arizona State beat Arizona, and Arizona had a bunch of issues shooting free throws in that game. one thing. Billy Donovan a little bit down right now. He won't be down long, man. He's got great stock, and he will get them down. That's a nice dunk thrown down by Demetrius Henry. Henry on the inside gets the catch. A little lackadaisical defensive effort right there by Kentucky. Henry's got five of the eight for South Carolina, but it is all Kentucky. We talked about it. It's love of the dunk weekend. This is uh, pretty good stuff from Kentucky early on. Yep, giving some love, man, with some high-rising jams. Nick. Chris, seven teams in Joe Lunardi's bracketology out of the Big 12 currently in the mix. Speaking of in the mix, a couple of Kentucky Wildcats made their way back, Julius Randle and James Young. Well, Julius had that injury. Wish him the best in his recovery process. He's on the left, James Young. They're going up and down a little bit with the Boston Celtics. Coach Calipari is going to try to make it to New York tonight to have some dinner with a couple of his old players. We mentioned it. It is the weekend for the dunk. It's for love of the dunk. This is why we're talking about it. If you were curious, it is the anniversary of the dunk. 
Bob Curlin, 70th anniversary of the dunk. He was a great player. Now, you weren't around to see Bob Curlin. <laughs> I was not. I can confidently, if nothing else today, I can confidently say I was not around to see any of that. I think it was against against Temple. I want to say he hit the first. He had his. He had the first dunk. Credited with the first dunk. Played for a great, great coach. Cornwell got it blocked on the inside, but a foul is called. John Calipari did not like the call against Lyles. His second foul. Played for the great Hank Iba, one of the best coaches of all time. Done with Orlando's pool about that call. Didn't like it against Lyles. Come on, John, relax. You're nominated for the Hall of Fame. It's Valentine's <laughs> Day, and you're up 18. Here's the list of the uh, Hall of Fame nominees, the finalists. They're the finalists, and some people already got in, have been designated George Raveling, deservingly so, as a contributor. Yep. Louis Dampier, yes, sir. former great player here at Kentucky. He got in for his play, also for the ABA. Tommy Heinsohn. Oh, special man. Long-time coach, long-time broadcaster. Yep, Celtic superstar. It's such a moment. Let me tell you, it is an incredible moment to be able to get the phone call and say you've been elected and you will be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Paulie Stein all the way inside. Great move right there by Willie Paulie Stein. That was a terrific move, utilizing his left hand. Great first step. He's got to be a little bit more unselfish. I think the kid is really right now a player that is just, he's very passive. He's going to turn it up a notch. He's so talented. Well, look at Carrera banging down low with Carl Anthony Towns. You talked about the guy who plays with as much intensity as Frank Martin on the sidelines. That's Michael Carrera. Notice put into a very tough spot. Great defense from Kentucky. Continues and a foul on the game. Thanks. You know, anytime you play defense like they do, you always got a chance to win. When you're playing at the field goal percentage level they play out, when you're blocking shots, it's always going to put you in a position, even if you're struggling offensively. And they've been able to survive scares. They've had scares, but they find a way. An LSU game, the last three minutes and 53 seconds, five possessions, they locked it up defensively, and that was the difference. Lyles the pull up over Steele. He knocks that one down. Kentucky continues to roll. Now their largest lead at 21 here in the first half. They're getting all the open shots they want. They're executing well. Great spacing. This defense, you know, we've talked a lot about it, and rightfully so, but this is one of the better defenses probably in the last, what, 20 years of college basketball that you've seen? I'd say the last 35. Okay. I'm on ESPN now going on my 36th year. I haven't seen teams play much better than this. You can make an argument for Patrick Dewey's team when he played at Georgetown. You can make an argument for Jerry Tarkanian. The late Jerry Tarkanian's team with the Larry Johnson, Stacey Altman group. Steel bumps Collie Stein. Well, Super Tuesday on your TV, presented by Cree LED Lighting. Got a good one, and Dickie V will be in Knoxville. Number one Kentucky goes on the road to take on Tennessee, and then we'll see the great in-state matchup. How about the win today for Michigan State? They'll get set to take on Michigan. It's all part of Rivalry Week, presented by Wendy's. That was certainly a big win when you talk about Tom Izzo's kids. See, I think Tom Izzo should be nominated for the Hall of Fame already. Sure. I really do, for what he's achieved. What he's done down there at Michigan State has been special and unique. He'll get his call. There's no question he'll get a call. So will Bill Self eventually, and so will Billy Donovan. I was thinking about this just because you mentioned Tom Izzo, and earlier we were talking about Jerry Tarkanian and his practices. Judd Heath, Heathcote told Tom Izzo that nobody ran a tougher practice than Jerry Tarkanian. I saw that quote the other day. I thought about you when I heard that. I uh, know. I was to be so in the wall watching his practice sessions. Also, in all, when I walked with him in the casino, I thought it was what with Francis Albert Sinatra. I mean, he walked in. He was like, he ran the casinos, man. Everybody knew Jerry Tarr. Chairman of UNLV, certainly. Back to Kentucky. Four turnovers for South Carolina. They limited the turnovers the last few minutes, but just have not been able to get much offensively going. 1-11 all-time against the number one team. The only win came against Kentucky, though. It was back in 2010. Andrew Harrison to Devin Booker for a three. Got the friendly roll at home. He's always right on that win, man. He has a great release. Tucks his arm in really well. Very frustrating right now for Frank Martin and his kids. You feel bad. You don't like to see anybody beaten and humiliated. And right now, they were able to do anything they want for Tucky.
That's a long time to go, man. That's a long time to go. That was something else, though. I've had so much fun coming here to Rump. So many great moments, seeing such phenomenal basketball over the years. These fans have a lot to cheer about. And I don't buy the argument, and neither did John before the game. You know, it's better off they lose the game. I don't buy that. I know people say that, and I don't buy it. Now, if they lose the game, they'll say, yeah, it was a better idea. <laughs> sure, yeah, it was good that we lost the game. I do, get, I do give credit to John Calipari because of his attitude about, let's say they lose a game. He was very positive about it. He feels like whatever they're doing right now is working. And if they lose a the game, we'll come back and just do it a little bit better. And I thought that was a good attitude to have, probably. Well, oh, just make sure he doesn't lose the game in the tournament. <laughs> it's a different time, yeah. If they lose the game, maybe the next two weeks. You know, it's really sad it. in a way. And that's because what's happened now with the NCAA tournament and March Madness, all the pressure, basically, and all the evaluations is based on what you do in tournament time. Right. I mean, you can have a Duke or Carolina. They can have a great year. Get beat early in the NCAA tournament. People say, wow, what a disappointing season. I win 30 games, and it's not good enough. And that is sad. And that's what's happened now with March Madness. Also with like Kentucky. Can you imagine they go like 38-0 and or something and lose a game? And people say, well, really was a disappointment. They didn't win the national title. Well, 4.53 to play. Hotkevichis gets called for a foul. This is the remaining schedule for Kentucky in the regular season. And March 3rd at Georgia, the, according to the BPI, that is the lowest percentage for chance to win over the remaining regular season games. Obviously, you'll see him at Tennessee. they got to go to Georgia as well. You know, the BBI does a great job, but I rely on the VBDI. Tell, the tell me a little bit about that, Dick. The fight down ball moment, that's, <laughs> you know, just common sense. And you look at that right there. Common sense tells you, looking at all those clubs, personnel-wise, Kentucky's in another league. But, but, if kids' upsets happen, when a five-star player, let's say Kentucky the best is a five-star, he plays as a three for that 40 minutes, and the three-star player plays like a five by playing with such passion, intensity, and emotion, and that's how upsets happen. It takes a special type of game, though, it feels like it, or it's going to take a special type of game, really, to beat Kentucky the rest of the way. Well, I think there's certainly certain parts that have to occur. Number one, I think you better have a team that can make some threes. If you don't have that, I think you're in trouble. Number two, you better have some inside play that can neutralize their bigs. And you got to catch them on a night where they're not shooting well because they've yep. been very streaky throughout the year shooting from the perimeter. Have great moments and they have some very, you know, down moments. Tonight they're 2 of 4 from three-point range. They've been struggling their last three games or so from three-point range. Johnson gets called for the offensive foul. And how about Marcus Lee hustling all the way down to draw the charge? Well, they take such pride playing defensively. You know, I think the greatest achievement of John Calipari is the fact they're convinced that a lot of great players that he possesses here to play limited minutes. I mean, that is really unreal. Here's the charge. I mean, that's really, you got kids here, McDonald's All-Americans, kids want to play 35, 36 minutes, but he does a great job selling to them the fact that we're about winning, we're about the jersey that you're wearing on the front, Kentucky, and if you want to contribute and be part of us, that's the way it's going to be. And he's gotten guys to the NBA aplenty through this process, and he's been able to get very solid recruits year in and year out. Get guys to the NBA year in and year out. A couple of guys are in the house tonight. Well, for John Paul, Calipari's team. Paul Biancardi will tell you they're going to put them on class again coming in next year. That's right. Up 25. I see that one as well coming up, Adam. Chris, the Big Ten continues to get very, very tight up towards the top. Michigan State with a big win today. Wisconsin's got a game tomorrow that they have to play in Madison. Things continue to get very, very exciting as we get closer and closer to March. Well, you know, Valentine's Day. I got my old Valentine's team now. I want to hear this. Oh, I got Reginald Kisuno. You think about him. He's played for Northwestern State, Louisiana. He's out with a little knee injury right now. But what about Josh Hart? You think about him from out of Villanova. L.J. Rose from out of Houston. What about Jalen Law from out of Denver? And then... You got a coach, right? You got a way. Well, you got a coach. You got the Huggins man, Bobby Huggins. And you got a referee. What about our guy, Teddy Valentine? <laughs> and then you got the man of man today, as they just talked about in the studio, Denzel Valentine with the big trifecta. They love him in Spartan land, especially after that three to beat the Buckeyes. I mean, wouldn't have the top one been the obvious choice? Wouldn't Denzel Valentine be as obvious a choice as you have to have on, on Valentine's Day? I'm going to call it by Valentine's Day for me. <laughs>
Taking my wife out tonight for some dinner, along with Pam Valvano Strasser and John Strasser. Going to go to beautiful Seasons 52 in Sarasota. There's that Dickie V's all Valentine's team. Who's Dickie V? I know that guy. I like this. This, is, this, I'm, this I'm a fan of. Look at his defensive effort. Somebody better tell him they're up 25. Long three from the corner for Akevichus. He knocks it down. Just a 7-3 on 21 tries this year. Akevichus is a good guy that can give him some inside play. Can't stop him, man. They just go offensively on fire. The execution, Harrison, yeah. very efficient. Let's check in with Kaylee Harto. Well, Adam, it won't be any surprise to you guys to hear that Coach Cal is pleased with the defensive effort he's seen from his guys, particularly the ball pressure. His message to the guys now is all about staying alert. He says when you're one pass away, make sure you see the ball and your man. He wants to see them forcing more bad passes by South Carolina. Tell you one thing, Kaylee, you think about depth, you think about a team as talented. I mean, look at the numbers. I haven't seen a team this talented when you look in terms of the depth factor. I mean, they just go so deep. Every guy they bring in, quality. Defensively, I know Virginia's up there. Again, Virginia, Kentucky right near the top of just about every efficiency and point per game chart. They do it in different ways. Well, Virginia, what I love about Virginia is five guys. You got ten eyes watching the ball. They play the ball so exceptionally well. In fact, when we did our last game with Virginia, Doris Burke broke it down, showed their the strategy and how they just swim to the basketball. Lotus takes a three. Nothing going down for South Carolina. Put it mildly, this has been ugly, my friend. Yeah. It's ugly in the terms of competitive game, but it's not ugly in terms of the unbelievable precision of Kentucky. They are really playing exceptionally well, offensively, defensively. Aaron Harrison able to run it down, kept it in play for Pauly Stein. Now you tell me that guy is not a big time prospect. Man, what ability and what talent. There is no way in the world he should not be a double figure scorer. Except maybe the minutes hurt him a little bit, and he's content contributing. Look at this crowd. They're standing up, they're cheering. Big Blue Nation, they love their cats. Got a lot to cheer about the last five years with John Calipari as the head coach. Kevich is pulling his way inside, and it won't go down. He did a good job coming across the lane. Didn't get the ball to bounce his way. It is not going to be a pretty moment to sit in that locker room at South Carolina. I've been there before when you're getting whacked. I mean, getting whacked, and you got to come out and try to get the kids a little bit excited for playing the second half. About as good of a half as Kentucky has had in SEC play. Pauly Stein. I like the fact he's trying to be a little bit more aggressive. Watch this. Watch this block. They fouled him there. Yep. Pauly Stein gets called for it as Kaichinis took it to the other end of the floor. Well, Kaichinis did a great job using his body to seal off Willie Pauly Stein. You know, in some matchups, like I would really love to see. I would love to see let's them go, hooked go, up when I'm looking at. Kentucky with Gonzaga. I think the Zacks because they got, team. they got well they got two team guys inside that can really play. I mean they can play on the interior and Kyle Wilcher gives them a guy that can make threes. And isn't it unbelievable he played for Kentucky? That's right. How would that be for him to come and play against, let's say Kentucky, and knock him down some threes, man? He's having a great year and they got very experienced guards and guards can play well. I would love to see that matchup. What's another? Give me, give me another team that you think might have a shot. Maybe a Wisconsin, maybe an Arizona. Who else sticks out that well, can give Kentucky? A I think when you go in a tournament play, there's a lot of teams maybe on a given day. But I think logically, you look out there the way they control tempo and the way they shoot the ball. Oh, are you serious? Everything is going their way today. Execution, execution. So efficient. That'll be a great time in Lexington tonight. Celebrating Valentine's Day. Marcus Lee bringing the house down, bringing the crowd up. Shot clock turned off here in the first half. You know, to answer your question, Adam, I think Wisconsin was convinced in company last year. They challenged, they weren't intimidated at all, so they're not going to be intimidated. I think a lot of people psychologically maybe are beaten by Kentucky before the game starts. 
about this sequence? The hustle from both play, both teams, really, but Euless finding Lee. Nice pass by Euless and Lee with the conversion. Kid like Eda Lee could be a star in a lot of places. They got another great class coming in. The beat's going to go on and on and on. The man can flat out recruit, and he's got a great place to sell. Yep. I mean, you got a place here. You're walking in locker rooms. You're walking in facilities. The way they love basketball, and then he just points out all those big bulletin uh, displays, posters of all the guys in the NBA. I mean, are you kidding me? That list is incredible. They basically got their their playing cards blown up at the craft center where they practice yeah. in that gym around the walls every NBA player that's come out of Kentucky last well year. they could change from being All-American put up their multi-million dollar role I mean <laughs> I mean these guys all making zillions playing in the NBA and that's why they're willing to give up like right now all that playing time clock down to two it is Euless it is Harrison and it is wow. a very impressive first half for Kentucky He better be complimentary. He better be complimentary. Oh. John Calipari with Kaylee Hartung. This week, you wanted your players to understand how to stretch a 12-point lead to a 20-point lead. When you're up 25, what do you want to see? Well, we're really guarding, and they're playing off of one another. Offensively, we're getting pretty good execution. I love that the game is physical. The guys that can't play physical can't play in this game. Uh, but I like our guard play right now inside. We're, we're playing good basketball. Your last three opponents have been able to score on you. Where do you rank this defensive effort among well, Again, those? if you're not going to block shots, whatever your reason, my knee hurts, my ankle hurts, if we don't block shots, they get to the rim. If you block shots, they got to shoot perimeter shots, and they're going to shoot a lower percentage. We had three or four games. Guys are shooting layups. Six-foot guards scoring on seven-footers. Well, they're going to shoot a high percentage. Thank you, Coach. 19th time in 25 games that John Calipari's team leads at halftime. It's a 25-point lead. Mazda Halftime Report, Chris Cotter, Miles Simon. Boys, take it away. It's all yours. Welcome you back to the SEC on ESPN at Rupp Arena. 43 to 18, the second largest halftime margin for Kentucky during SEC play. Adam Amin, Dick Vitale, Kaylee Hartung as well. That was about as good as it gets for Kentucky. Well, they did everything right. They did a great job on the defensive end. They really came out, pressured immediately, got on the offensive glass, did a great job executing offensively. They were efficient. They get an A plus, man. I feel bad a little bit for Frank Martin and his yeah. kids because it was a tough first half. We're celebrating the love of the dunk. It's for love of the dunk weekend here in Kentucky was uh, was pretty much doing it all half long. Well, you see the love of the dunk, man. We had a guy visit with us that was for the love of the dunk. <laughs> Talk about Kenny Skywalker, Skywalker, man. This is what Kentucky did all half long. They shot 57% in the first half. They led by as many as 27. They by 25 at halftime. 24 points in the paint to just four for South Carolina. And as per usual, the white platoon starts the second half. Well, South Carolina went five for 24. And that was really a credit to the defensive effort of Kentucky. But I mean, when they were executing defensively, the one thing South Carolina kids have to know, they can't be totally embarrassed. They've done this to a lot of teams, some very elite teams. Think about what happened early in the season between Kansas and UCLA and the types of games that Kentucky had, the opponents that they had, the types of performances they put up early in the season. Well, the Jayhawks shot 19%. When you talk about UCLA, they were down four touchdowns before they could flinch an eye. Had eight points and a half during that game against Kentucky. As you take a look at our confident play, it's brought to you by TD Ameritrade. All the numbers belong to Kentucky from that first 20. Every number, the most important number right on the scoreboard. 25-point halftime lead off target from Thornwell, who had six points in the first half for South Carolina. Andrew Harrison got fouled by Hatkevichis. He's playing really aggressively here today. He's had some down moments, but today really playing aggressive. It's been a tough 20-plus minutes for South Carolina. Kaylee Hart's unchecked in with Frank Martin. Well, Adam, as Coach Martin told me, he didn't think his team put up a fight in the first half. He told them if you're not going to put up a fight to at least try to win the battle of effort against Kentucky, you won't beat them on talent alone. He said he didn't see his guys going after loose balls, going after rebounds. One of his biggest frustrations, he had three post players in for a combined 25 minutes. Not a one of them had a rebound to speak for in that time. Terrific job by Kelly right there. Telling the story what really existed. 
I mean, right now, there's only one chance you have against Kentucky. You better play at another level. You better play with such fever and such intensity and such emotion to have a shot. But they took it right out of South Carolina early in the game. They really came out with that fighter's mentality. What do you want to see from South Carolina? You've been a coach in tough spots like this before. You said you can sympathize with Frank Martin. What do you want to see from the Gamecocks? Well, right now, Adam, what you got to do is forget about the scoreboard and just play this game in segments and try to win little segments five minutes at a time and try to get them to execute, do the things you practice, shooting 20%, shot 22% in the first matchup. That's no accident. That's created by the defensive, the size, the agility, and the toughness of the Kentucky players. Aaron Harrison led the way for Kentucky. He had 11 first half points. Dominique Hawkins did not play in that first half. He'd been mixing in with the blue platoon as of late, starting a handful of games. Lyles got the assignment tonight to be back in the starting lineup after he had missed three games. He returned against LSU. Kevich is short on the three, and Ulis, who is the only Wildcat to play and not score with the rebound. Little sky, ball bounced out right to him. Andrew Harrison. Kevich just got fouled by Dakari Johnson, who had a very, very good first half. Six points and seven rebounds in the opening 20 minutes. I think the foul went the other way. Oh, you're right. I think it went the other way on Hakevich. You're right. That's four now on Limonis Hakevich. And three points, four fouls for the Lithuania native. Callie Stein back in the game, and Johnson turns it over. 6 turnovers for Kentucky in this ball game. 2 minutes in the second half. Well, even a free look. Cauley Stein out on the perimeter. Notice should have a 3 point look there, but that's how good of a defender Cauley Stein is. Well, he's so agile, he can play all over the place. He moves all over the court, he's got some good quickness. It's a little different than the unbelievable tension they had facing them in a nervous time against Florida and LSU. We talked about near the top, and Kaylee talked to us about it. Winning time. When you have a 13, 14, 15 point lead, can you extend it out? And certainly that was the case for Kentucky. That first half as Callie Stein picks up his second foul. That's the type of defense we're talking about. It's a very difficult inbound against the length of this Kentucky defense. Well, it really gets down to personnel as well. I mean, there's a limit in terms of the talent level versus the Kentucky players. There's a reason a lot of these guys are McDonald's All-Americans. Had nine if you factor in certainly Poitras, who's out with an injury. Right, he's been out since December with the ACL injury. With Poitras in the lineup, Kentucky had the biggest front line in the country outside of the Portland Trailblazers. Wow. Oh. NBA. Paulie Stein missed the dunk. Johnson got a block by Carrera. Nice play by Carrera. I'll tell you one thing, that kid plays hard. He really does. Plays with a lot of energy. Thornwell for three. Booker the rebound. Harrison, Coley Stein. Oh! Oh! They're rocking the house. They're having fun. Love the dunk. Love of the dunk. One of the better Kentucky dunkers probably in the last decade or so. Cauley Stein, he said that dunk that he had against Florida kind of gave him the energy he needed. He's been really, really good ever since. Well, it certainly helped the team as well. They yeah. needed that play. It gave him momentum. That just massive dunk he had against the Florida Gators. Here's Booker. He was on the sideline. So Stepped out of bounds. Wave out the three. Well, can he stroke it down? He has such beautiful form. Dad Melvin played for Missouri. There's the diagonal pass, the catch, good hands. He was a whiteout. Would you believe this? This guy was a whiteout in football in high school. How would you like to throw to a seven-footer? Who has hands. Catch catch radius, I think, is a good good term to use for Willie Cauley stuff. Don't start using words like that. Radius, <laughs> that's beyond my norm. Oh, come on. Here's notice. Good nice pump fake. <laughs> and get the roll. There's Cauley Stein for another rebound. Booker could have went to a couple of other places. Could have went to maybe Missouri, where his father played, as Dickie mentioned. Maybe could have went to Michigan State to play for Tom Izzo. Could have went a lot of places, anywhere he wanted, really, America's guest. But I'll tell you one thing. 
you talk about this kid. If he played 35 minutes a night, Oof. he would put up some impressive numbers. One of the best pure shooters. Paul Biancardi told me that he might be the best pure shooter, along with James Blackman Jr. of Indiana, that came out of last year's class in the country. You know, you don't see many guys when they shoot it that you think it's going to go in. He's won every time he shoots it, you think it's going to go in. And this has become a nice little addition to the game. The mid-range game has gotten better as the season has gone on. Speaking of recruiting, Frank Martin's got a couple of good kids coming in next year. So things are looking up for South Carolina. P.J. Dozier, yeah, his sister daddy, plays. His That's daddy right. was a great player. That's right. South Carolina player. And the sister plays for the previously unbeaten women's team before they drop one last week to Connecticut. 47-18, and Pauly Stein continuing to do it, Dickie. There's the diagonal pass. There's the catch. There's the jam. Love the dunk here. There's Kenny Skywalker, one of the great dunkers of all time. Jack Givens, Dan Issel, what a crew. But some really good dunkers have run their way through Rupp Arena. I want to see if Dickie V remembers this moment. There you go. Tapped away from Wells. Turpin with the steal. Minifield, foot race. Oh, yes! Oh, yes. Kentucky Secretariat out of the gate. Thoroughbred basketball. Do it, number 10. Dirk Minifield <laughs> was looking down at the hoop when he, at 6'3", threw it down. That was admittedly pretty awesome. That was a pretty big moment. That was a pretty impressive Rupp Arena moment right there. Oh, it was unbelievable. Minifield erupting with that unbelievable dunk. That was in 19, like, 83. Yeah, he That's nailed a year, it. He nailed year it. That Jimmy V won the national title. That's right. Unbelievable. Sitting in the house here. Goose Gibbons came over to say hello. Had one of those great, great games in the championship. You weren't even born yet. <laughs> I mean, are you kidding me? <laughs> All Kentucky so far tonight. South Carolina at the line. With Dwayne Notice, Willie Cauley-Stein certainly putting his name up with some of the better dunkers in Kentucky history. I think his stock is going up and up. The last couple of performances, I think NBA people are charting his play. Can't teach that size he has, my friend. You can't teach that size looking, and that agility. Yeah, they're looking at a couple of guys from this lineup right now as potential first-round draft picks, which is now necessarily a surprise. Oh, he got fouled. Yep, Booker got fouled by... Thornwell, go to the line. Lyles is projected to maybe be a first round pick. Same thing with Willie Cauley Stein and Carl Anthony Towns. Looking at somebody like uh, Dakari Johnson to maybe be a second round pick. So much talent, so much potential. And you wonder when guys, if at all, if they're going to leave and decide to go to the NBA. I mean, think about Anthony Davis. He Had he not gone to the NBA he'd be a senior right now on a Kentucky team and there's a couple of NBA guys in Julius Randle and James Young pretty good players I mean Julius now battling a serious injury yeah. also happened to Jamari Parker as well and with the Lakers James Young as you said been up and down with the Boston Celtics this season great year for John Wall this year Derrick Rose is starting to look like his old self See, when you're John Calipari and you got the kind of talent available, he can get the attention of the players very simply. If you want playing time, you're going to play. You're going to dig in on the defensive side, and they're digging in right now. They're not playing the scoreboard. They're just playing defense, man. They're playing defense. Paulie Stein was running the floor. There's Euless trying to get in the books. There's the hustle. Paulie Stein will keep that possession alive. Every game, they take everybody's best hit at them. They take everybody's hit. They've been taking it all year long. I'm going to hustle right here. And you like to see that in a player. I mean, here you're up by zillions, and you're still hustling and hustling. Having I mean, a little bit of the mix of the lineup right now. Both Cauley Stein and Johnson right in the paint, but neither was looking for the ball. So this is interesting to me, because now you're looking at Cauley Stein who's, let's call him, you know, the, on the blue platoon. Dakari Johnson from the white platoon, Harrison from the blue, Booker from the white, Euless from the white. So you're starting to see a little bit of the mix of these players. And I go back to what you and I talked with John Calipari about earlier today and maybe starting to think about it at the very least. Trying to mix up some of these lineups. You've got to start thinking about when you get a tournament play, I really believe you've got to keep your key players, Carl Anthony Towns and those guys on the floor. Shamik Shepard has been dealing with a knee injury all season. Good to see him back out on the floor. Andrew Harrison drawing the foul. We'll go to the line. Turned on the speed right there. Harrison really attacking the rim. 
We see Lyles getting ready to come into the ball game. You see a couple of subs ready to come in, Kaylee. Well, Adam, as you guys talk about the platoon system and the way that John Calipari keeps playing with it, you know, if you remember, he left that first platoon in until the 1345 mark of the first half. He doesn't usually leave them in that long. But as he told his team at halftime, they were playing hard. If you play that hard, if you defend as well as that group was defending for a 12 to 2 score at that moment, well, hey, you guys in the white platoon come the second half, you can stay in just as long. But now you're seeing and mixing and matching a little bit. And as uh, you guys have talked about, seeing what works. See, you can get the attention of players, man. PT, play in time, we'll get an attention of a player. Sometimes it feels like that's the only thing that can get an attention, get the attention of a player. You mentioned white platoon, blue platoon. I know one thing, a lot of these guys give me a green platoon. <laughs> the cash register. Not a lot of money coming up for, the, ding, for a lot ding, of these ding. guys, that's right. Largest lead of the game is 30 for Kentucky. They have not made a field goal in this half so far. Terry Moore calls it this way. It'll stay at this end of the floor with South Carolina. It's really tough, <clears throat> tough for them to get any open looks. Yep. 0 for 9 from the floor in this half so far. Only a couple of points from the foul strike. 0 for 9, and that's after a 5 for 24 first half. Going well. Oh, Step yeah, back for a tough three. There's no room for the kid to make some shots. Towns and Cauley Stein back on the floor together along with Lyles. He's the starting five out there right now with the Harrison Twins. See, there's an example right there. You don't want to bring the ball that down. He right. now neutralizes, takes, takes away his great size advantage. There are a lot of coaches talk about that right now, especially with their big guys wanting to do a little bit too much dribbling. And they see him go straight up with it. Tonight we got to go in on ESPN, Syracuse and Duke. I know Syracuse has been struggling, but that crowd will be electric. It's sold out, and you got Christmas inside. We're going to give a lot of trouble to Okafor down in the low post. I think they were saying that this will be, and I know last year they had set the record for an on-campus college basketball game in terms of attendance. I believe that it will be an even higher number of attendees at the Carrier Dome tonight when number four Duke comes into town. I'll tell you one thing, it was a great environment. I was there last year. It was just so special. So special. And one of the great games of the season. Actually, really wow. two of the great games of the season between Duke and Syracuse as Colley Stein knocks it down. What about the big guy? I think he's showing some versatility yes, here sir. today. A very nice all-around game for Willie Colley Stein. Considered to be one of the top 20 players in the country, at least in terms of the Wooden Award list that came out with 20 semifinalists. Willie Colley Stein is on that list. No double dribble because I believe Carl Anthony Towns made contact with the basketball. But You're right. here comes Kentucky back once again. And you saw Colley Stein running the floor with his hand up looking for another dunk. He runs so well for a big guy. Aaron Harrison. Short on the three. Thornwell there for the rebound. Tough go continues. Kentucky ball. Marcus Lee will come in for the Wildcats. We've got Louisville and North Carolina State coming up as well on ESPN. North Carolina State's lost a lot of tough games. Louisville rides his shoulders in a big three. Talking about Rogier, Jones, and Harrell. Harrell's been playing really well lately. First time that they're meeting in 27 years, North Carolina State and Louisville. Carl Anthony Towns, the defender surrounding him. It'll be a three-second violation against Carl Anthony Towns. Well, you don't see that call too often. I think they should make it a little bit more and get guys out of that lane. I'd like to see them widen the lane a little bit to get the big guys away, give you more driving ability. You know, I mentioned a Syracuse game, and I mentioned Christmas. I'll tell you what troubles me, seeing innocent kids being penalized, can't play in tournament, can't play yep. in the ACC because things happened seven, eight years ago. Find the school. Don't penalize kids. Find them $10 million. Give him a big dollar figure for violating the rules. The white innocent kids. I don't understand that, Adam. I never did, and I never comprehend the logic there. Penalizing innocent players. That's going back to an investigation that was initiated by Syracuse back in 2007. So they put a self-ban 
on themselves for the postseason. So they will now participate not only in the NCAA tournament, but in the ACC tournament as well. As Lyles hits for the baseline. He's got a nice little turnaround jump yeah. shot, originally committed to Indiana. A Indianapolis native out of Arsenal Tech High School. Largest lead of the ball game up to 31. One thing they're very proud of right now at South Carolina, the women's program. Dawn Oof, Staley doing absolutely. an amazing job. Amazing job. Lost the, that game to Connecticut, but you know, a lot of people can lose to Connecticut. Gino Oriemi talking about putting up numbers. Here comes Lyles. And they'll go to the free throw line on the other side. We'll have more on Willie Cauley-Stein on the other side of this break, but he's showing off a lot of the versatility today. Yeah, he really is. He's been a little bit more aggressive, more offensive. Here he's right now going to step out, show his little jump shooting range. John Calipari had a lot of very, very positive things to say about Willie Cauley-Stein earlier in the season. He's been showing off a very, very nice game tonight. Coming every day with a warrior's mentality is all new to him, but he's taken on a leadership role more than he ever has. He's got guard feet, guard hands, guard reactions, and he's seven foot one. Are you crazy? We were talking about him defensively. That length helps him out on the perimeter, on the interior. He's been about as good of a defensive player all around as there is in the country. He's really starting to blossom now. I really took him a little time. He's like, I used to label him a teaser. I yeah, watched yes. some moments. I, like this, yeah. I, I, I noticed some moments of, man, does he tease you? You see that unbelievable potential. But that potential is becoming realistic right now. 31-point lead for the Kentucky Wildcats. This is now their largest lead of the ballgame at 32. Came around of the gate. They wasted no time mm -hmm. setting the tone that they were going to take charge. They have a shot today to tie one of the great teams. The team from 1953-1954 that started their season 25-0 and were the number one team in the country, but declined an invitation to go to the NCAA tournament. They had some ineligible players. At least they were ruled ineligible at the time. There were three of them that had graduated the previous year, so they were ruled ineligible for the tournament that season. Nate off Rupp, despite some of the wants of his players, the other players on the team, were hoping that they would still go play in the NCAA tournament. That was not the case. Nate off Rupp ended up declining the invitation to go to the NCAAs that year. So a win today starts up this Kentucky team at 25-0 and to match that club, and they'll have a chance to get the best start in the books in Kentucky history. You'll be there on Tuesday in Knoxville. You know, John's been that way before. He's had teams that have gone out to big-time runs. Was that Memphis? Now, Kayla, you were talking to John Calipari about this very thing. 25 straight wins, five separate times in his career. Is that right? Five separate times. And the thing that he likes to point out is that he's done this at three different programs in three different leagues. So, yes, he acknowledges he's had a lot of good players, but the key for him is that he did the same things at UMass that he's doing here. Yes, different offenses, of course, but it's it's the family atmosphere that he builds. The fact that he says to his players every game has its own importance. You can't treat one as any different than the next. He asked me, how many of our shoot arounds have you been to? I said five. He said, well, have you ever seen me run one different than another? I said, no, sir, <laughs> have not. But the challenge for him often comes in keeping his players engaged because they too know what's coming next in the routine that he's built you know Kelly you talk about no difference when he's at mass and certainly here the only difference is in terms of the budget the budget here is a little <laughs> bit bigger than the budget he had when he was at mass and he has been able that's why I knew Kelly the moment and Adam the moment he got the Kentucky job come on now he had everything going from you know he's gonna win big I didn't think it win as big as he's won I mean with all the one and done he's proved our us, I know he proved to me, I didn't think he could win a national championship with one and done players, but he went out and he did it with the Anthony Davis and Michael Kidd, Gilchrist, and those guys. The guy can coach. He is not just a recruiter. He can flat out coach. Take a look at his numbers there. I mean, he's heading for enshrinement. To me, there's no doubt he ultimately, if it doesn't happen the first time, it will eventually happen. Again, earlier today was named a finalist for the Naismith Hall of Fame. Some very good names. Dick Pavetta, referee, Bill Fitch, Tim Hardaway. 
Kevin Johnson, Lisa Leslie, Dikembe Mutombo on that list, and of course, Bo Ryan. You know, all deserving people. If I were voting, I'd vote for them all, man. I know they get tough sometimes. It took me three shots, I think. No, I got shot down three times. It was my fourth oh. one. My fourth one. They, you, I, know, you know the old saying, though, Dickie V, the fourth I, time is the charm, right? I, I got tired of the phone calls, started to be coming and say, <laughs> you know what an honor it is? What an honor it is to be nominated. As soon as they said that, you knew it was Rejection it was re City. <laughs> You'd heard that conversation a couple of times apparently beforehand. Well, the one time I did get it in 2008, the John Dolever called the head of it, and it was such a feeling. I was going out to the airport, and the phone rang, and I ran back inside, and I picked it up, and he said, sit down. And I said, sit down. He said, I was ready for that usual spiel, and he said, you just been inducted into the Hall of Fame. That inductee been elected. Man, it was such a feeling. That's excellent. Thornwell for three, in and out. The defensive possession again for Kentucky, which leads by 30. That goes through your mind, and you think about all the people that make it possible. Nobody gets in the Hall of Fame without a cast of people that have opened doors for you and given you opportunities. The ESPN family certainly played a vital role in me getting in the Hall of Fame. What did you say, 36 years here? Yep, 36. Oh, look at this. Marcus Lee from Ulysses. Doing anything they want, my friend. We can talk basketball all we want here. I'm going to tell you, I'd love to see, as I told you earlier, Adam, when you asked me who'd you like to see him play, I'd like to see him play Gonzaga because with Kornowski and Sabonis on the inside, Big guys. they got guys that could challenge in the interior. Then you throw in Wiltshire to make threes, and you factor in Pangos and Bell. They got players. I think that would be one heck of a matchup. You know, there are t-shirts in India that read, if cricket is religion, then Sachin is God. The Little Master is the story of that religion, and the man Sachin Tendulkar, the five-foot-five batsman who is long considered to be one of the greatest cricket players in history, maybe the greatest of all time. The dramatic tale of one man's meeting with history and a team's meeting with greatness. It's The Little Master, presented by ESPN Films, Sunday at 8 on ESPN. Full house substitution, four for four here. Towns Lee, Ulysses, and Aaron Harrison will hit the bench with Kentucky up by 31. He's put together a heck of a staff, too. Just going to say. He really has. Slice Rorson, an outstanding recruiter. Knows everybody, especially in the East. And then you look right there. <laughs> certainly uh, just the quality staff that he has. And Kenny Payne, John Robick on that staff. John Robick's been there for years. Yeah, a long time. He does a great job in Kenny Payne. They zone him right now. Doesn't matter. Zone man to man. Get anything they want. Andrew Harrison a little bit off target. Loose ball comes out to Willie Cauley Stein. Lyles to Cauley Stein. He continues to be about as good as anybody on the floor today, and he'll go to the free throw line. He had such a great finish in that game with LSU. Without his performance at the end, they don't win that game. LSU did everything possible to win that game until the last three minutes. And again, a couple of times that we've had a chance to talk with Jan John Calipari about it. He said he wanted more. He needs more from Cauley Stein and Johnson and Carl Anthony Towns. And he's starting to get that at a very crucial time of the season when a lot of teams start to hit the wall. These guys are starting to play their best basketball. Well, here, look at really Cauley Stein running the court. Runs it so well. Maybe he's driving to the goal using the left hand. Very smooth at the free throw line. Towns has been very good as of late at the foul strike. Cauley Stein's been a little bit better. He's got a dozen. And Kentucky right up there defensively, though second in the country in points allowed per game. Only Virginia has allowed fewer points per game. Lead the country and could have an NCAA record in terms of field goal percentages. Brian Steele puts one in for two. Nice little play by Steele. Got a gap right there. Floater in the lane. Harris in the crossover. Here comes South Carolina. South Carolina over the years has had such a proud tradition back in the early days when you think about Frank McGuire and the great teams they had. Had that underground railroad coming out of New York City. So many great players from Winters to Joyce to Riker. And right down by Bobby Cremins. Bobby Cremins certainly uh, had a great love for South Carolina. Eddie Fogler did a real good job when he coached there. About Alex English a little bit too. 
Cavaliers. We're talking about the defense of Virginia, but right now the number two Cavaliers are in a little bit of trouble. Chris Cotto has it on the other side. Yeah, Chris, thanks very much. Looking forward to seeing the first meeting in 27 years between the Cardinals and the Wolfpack. All Kentucky today. This is what we've got for you coming up. Big game with West Virginia and Iowa State. And a pretty good one under the radar tonight in prime time on the SEC Network. Arkansas and Ole Miss under the radar have both gone 8 and 3 in the SEC. You'll get to see Arkansas on the road in Oxford tonight. They got a great player in the kid Portis. Portis Absolutely. can flat out score. Double double machine. How many big late performances have those guys have claws and Portis yep. feels like every night they're getting a dunk that's going to win the game. And get ready for that later on tonight. That's over on the SEC Network. Rough night for Frank Martin, South Carolina Gamecocks. The loss tonight is going to guarantee their 21st non-winning SEC season in the 24 years they've been in this league. But, as we've talked about, Frank Martin does have the recruiting coming in. He's got a couple of very good players in P.J. Dozier and Chris Silva coming in. And two names to watch out for next season in Columbia. Looking for Johnson up top was Harrison. They're always looking for the high percentage loft to throw it up on top for the little jam. Like that, D. Right there. Willie Cauley Stein on the receiving end. 14 point night for Willie Cauley Stein. Talk about high percentage shots, Adam. I think that's a pretty high percentage shot. Coming into the game, Cauley Stein had 87 field goals. 82 of them were in the paint. Shot 60% on the season. He's right at that tonight, and he's got another rebound. That's just being smart, taking advantage of what you do do well, taking advantage of your size. Aaron to Andrew for three. Aaron Harrison has had a very nice night. Andrew Harrison is nine points now. Hytchinus, tough go with the defensive call this time. They really playing well. The entire team, everybody that's come on the floor, has basically contributed. Whether it be defense, whether it be offense, whether it be screening, whether it be passing the ball, this has been a superb Kentucky performance. And I realize against a team that is certainly not really a strong basketball team, but still, you got to come to play. It's a Division I major college conference team. Booker in the corner for three. Oh, I just love the way he shoots the rock. I just love the way he shoots the rock. Snort them all over that kid. Snort them all over him. Oh, they love it here. They're going to celebrate. Valentine's Day is going to be big in Lexington. Well, Kentucky leading it by 37, 513 to play. Let's, do, let's take a look at today's amazing play. It is brought to you by TurboTax. We've seen this a couple of times today from Willie Cauley-Stein, part of an outstanding all-around game today. Willie Cauley-Stein's been on fire. He showed all his versatility here today. And most of all, shows his ability to catch the ball in traffic and to jam that baby. Very difficult to spend that. Talking with Barry Rorson right there, 14.7 rebounds. He's been very good the last five games. Carl Anthony Towns, who had a very good start to this game, has been very solid the last four or five games as well. You know, I mentioned Barry Rorson. He played a final role in them recruiting a young guy named Briscoe coming out of New Jersey. McDonald's All-American. Who they're really excited about. Isaiah Briscoe, part of what is the number one recruiting class in the country right now for the Kentucky Wildcats. South Carolina's recruiting class coming in is listed at number 22. Good ball movement there. Steele, maybe the best pure shooter on South Carolina. Unable to connect there. There they go on the run. And Booker couldn't find Lyles. Frank Martin's a hard worker. He's got a lot of energy, a lot of intensity. Most of all, he has a lot of pride. Did a solid job, and he took over at Kansas State, replaced Bob Huggins. Yep. Another offensive rebound. Booker in the lane. Towns is there to follow him. They just do jump on the glass. Yep. Offensive rebounds. Best size. offense, best offensive rebounding team in the country, percentage-wise. You know, Adam, they don't only just have size; they have athleticism yeah. as well. They can move laterally. They got great elevation. 
Well, South Carolina had 18 offensive rebounds in the first meeting. They have not been able to perform that well on the glass today with eight offensive rebounds. Well, the way Kentucky started the season, everybody was saying scary. It was unbelievable. I mean, the way they were blowing out people. You yeah. mentioned that UCLA game having, I believe, seven at the half. Seven, yeah. It was 24 nothing before they blinked an eye. Yeah. I mean, it was just incredible. Roy Williams told me several occasions when they played against him, he said their defense is unreal. Another offensive rebound. Booker got it knocked away. 346 to play. Kentucky is on its way to matching the 53-54 Wildcats for the best start in school history. The snow has arrived in Lexington. Snow in Lexington. Very much. 346 to play here at Rupp. Journey to the Tourney presented by Sonic this week. It's all part of Rivalry Week presented by Wendy's. Wednesday Night Hoops presented by PNC. North Carolina and Duke in meeting number 239 between the Tobacco Road Rivals. That's Wednesday at 9 Eastern on ESPN. North Carolina, though, did go on the road today into a very difficult atmosphere and dropped the game to Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh has upset Carolina and Notre Dame in their home arena, but still... Five teams within two and a half games of the top spot of the ACC. Well, Jamie Dixon's kids must have played a great game today to beat North Carolina because they're so efficient offensively. But that is, that's, you know, you talk about rivalries, and certainly there are a lot of great rivalries. But North Carolina and Duke, both in the same conference, both feature great players, Hall of Fame coaches. It's as special as it gets. I know Jay and Dan will have a great time there. It'll be a phenomenal atmosphere again. And that's only the first meeting of the season between those two teams. They've got to play each other twice in the final couple of weeks of the ACC campaign. Nice fake right there. The notice couldn't get it to go down. Tyson is for the offensive glass, and the patience will go to the line. It's been a struggle all day, all afternoon, for South Carolina to get open looks. The defense has really elevated itself the last two games. People have been able to get shots against them. Coming up, that Duke-Syracuse is going to be special. I really do. I think the matchup inside, Christmas and Okafer, will be something to really watch. But I feel so bad, and I'll say it again. I feel bad for kids like you talk about Cooney, you talk about Christmas, why they're being penalized for the actions of others bothers me. Right to check out, man. NCAA would give those... Findings and they make a decision on the case right now. They self-impose Syracuse write them make them write a check out for about 10 mil and No postseason ACC or NCAA tournaments for Syracuse this year Well, Derek Willis and Dominique Hawkins are into the ballgame for Kentucky in these final three minutes Well, I hope he gets some people <laughs> in right now. Man, you gotta play everybody right now A good slate coming up the rest of the day today right here on ESPN the Nominee for the Hall of Fame today, John Calipari, is going to have his record go to 99 and 4 at Rupp Arena. How about that in five years? Okay, so proud. There's no question talking to him before. Proud, thinking about where he came from as a coach and got to here in Kentucky. I mean, he has to thank Rick Patino in a way because had Rick Patino stayed here and not gone to the Celtics, there'd be no John Calipari at Kentucky. I can guarantee you that. Mr. Patino would have owned this place. Saying, uh, kid from the wrong side of the tracks in Pittsburgh. Worked his way into coaching. He's had one heck of a career, and likely, you would think, even if it's not this time, is at some point, that's a Hall of Fame career. That's nice little, nice drive player. right there. Yep. Frank Martin's going to like the way he attacked the basket in that possession. But, you know, John Calipari, to me, you know, he's very young. The wins are going to be unreal. Yep. I mean, this, he's got a lot more wins in the tank. 621 wins in... 23 seasons. He's only 55 years of age right now. Just celebrated the birthday, actually, the 56th birthday, I should say. Look at these this lottery week. picks. Wow. John Wall, Demarcus Cousins, oh. an all-star this year. Brandon Knight, of course, Anthony Davis, who has been playing well as well as anybody in the NBA this season. Julius Randle's been dealing with injury. He's here tonight. You can actually form a heck of an NBA team with <laughs> players he's coached. When you factor in guys like Rose, Evans, People like that as well. Unreal the players he has been able to recruit and get the play as a team. Nice flip by Thornwell as we check in with Kaylee. Nice play by Thornwell down inside, Kaylee. Well, guys, right after Cal wraps up this game, he's hopping on a plane to head to New York for the All-Star Weekend festivities. He wants to catch up with all five of his guys involved in the weekend. Of course, Anthony Davis and John Wall voted to the All-Star team. DeMarcus Cousins. Added following Kobe's injury, and Friday, Nerlens Noel was in the Rising Stars Challenge, and tonight, Brandon Knight in the Skills Challenge. Cal told me the goal is to try to get all five guys and himself together for dinner tonight.
still unsure if he'll be able to nail them all down. But he said when any of those guys see him coming, there's a head shake because he knows how hard they've all worked, and they all know that he's not afraid to tell them the truth, no I matter mean, how well they're playing in the NBA. Hey, Kelly, who's going to pay for the dinner? I know one thing. He's not. Man, he's got the deepest pockets and the longest, shortest arms. Are you kidding me? There's no way he's going to pay for the dinner. That's a call out right there on John Calipari. Anthony it's, Davis, I'm going to tell you this. Right now, if you had to say, take a player in the NBA and you were starting a team, I mean, you could talk LeBron and all that, but looking at the years factor, how young he is. Nobody told me the other day I was shocked. I didn't know he, he's only 21. It's insane, right? He's he left, only he left 21 one year. years old. I thought his life's 22, 23. He's 21 years old. So you're not saying he's better than LeBron or anything like no, that, no, but based no, on no. the fact that he's only 21 yeah, years absolutely. of age and he's got all these potential. Absolutely. No, he's got to go a long way to be what LeBron has achieved. And LeBron's talent level, but his potential is off the charts. He's had some games that have been incredible. He came to the game the other day. He said, I just gave a talk to Willie Cauley Stein. You're so good. you got to be better than that. Hey, Pittsburgh with Virginia. That's going to be a nice matchup. Virginia's getting a test today from Wake. Pittsburgh with a win over North Carolina. Then Kansas has to go on the road to take on Bob Huggins, the man who preceded Frank Martin at Kansas State. The Kansas and West Virginia, part of rivalry week presented by Wendy's. Crowd just came to its feet. John Wall's mother was shown on the Jumbotron here. And these educated fans in Lexington remember all the players and all their parents and all their family members. And Dominique Hawkins gets into the scorebook with a three, but they remember everybody who's ever put on a Kentucky uniform. They love just about anybody who's ever worn a Kentucky uniform. You know, Dominique was a local player and star here in Kentucky. Cornwell with a two. South Carolina gets to 40 points. He went to Madison Central in Richmond to Dominique Hawkins. Bakari Johnson with two. Bakari gets in deep. It's amazing the talent you can rotate in. The kid that didn't really play up to his potential and how good he really is is Carl Anthony Towns here today. Yeah. I mean, he's been so sensational. But it's tough. He got so many players. He's going to share the ball to certain guys. And Johnson's come up with a double-double tonight, probably quietly, compared to what Cauley Stein has done over the course of the evening. A very solid night for Willie Cauley Stein. 14.7 rebounds. He's very impressive, very impressive. The last few games, he's been really elevating his stock, his game. Well, this is going to put Kentucky at 25 and 0. That will tie the 53-54 team for the best start in school history. And remember this: they won last night. Princeton ladies are undefeated. That's right. And finally, let me tell you, I know that now. They're undefeated and doing a great job down there in Princeton. This baby is finally over. Oh man, Frank Martin saying thanks. Let's get out of here. Let's go back to Columbia. What a performance by Kentucky. Adam, great work with you and Kelly. Had a lot of fun, buddy. This is a real pleasure, my friend. This is great. Kentucky was great too. 77 to 43. The final score here tonight. A very happy Valentine's Day here in Lexington. 25 and other. 12 and on the SEC. Dickie V will be in Knoxville. Part of Super Tuesday when the Wildcats go on the road to take on the Tennessee Volunteers who are sitting at six and five in the SEC. Still got some tough games. Auburn, Mississippi State, but then Arkansas and Georgia and Florida still coming up on Kentucky's schedule as we check in with Kaylee Harta. Coach, a strong defensive performance, but offensively, seven guys with eight points or more. What do you make of the offensive balance we shared, you found? We shared today. Um, our guard play, Andrew again. When he attacks, he makes everyone better, including himself. That's what he is. Get get in the lane. Don't hold back. Go. If you have pull-ups, shoot them. Um, but again, we shared the ball. We executed pretty well. It was a good, it was a good effort. You've said you want Willie Colley Stein to understand how good he can be. What do today. you think today helped? Well, I like that he's shooting jumpers, that he's confident enough. He works on it every day. So I want him to play that way. And, and he's capable. We learned today that you are a finalist induction into the Naismith Hall of Fame. What's your reaction? You know, I'm honored and really humbled when you think of the people in there and the people they're considering. But this, just like I tell my team, during the year, it's about the team. When the year's over, it's about individuals. We'll worry about that when this year ends. Thank Safe you. travels to the All-Star Game, Coach.
Thanks very much, Kaylee. Congratulations to Coach Calipari as well as he gets his team to 25 and 0, 12 and 0 in the SEC. Tennessee's coming up on Tuesday. Real pleasure to work with Dick Vitale for Kaylee Hartung. Adam Amin saying so long from Rupp Arena where Kentucky remains unbeaten. We've got North Carolina State Louisville coming up, but first, Chris Cotter's back in the studio.